Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about pre-printed informed consent form. I am Dr. Suresh Badanmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about blanket consent versus procedure specific consent. What is this pre-printed informed consent? What are the legal issues regarding the pre-printed informed consent and the recent case law will be discussed in this video. Let's understand the meaning of consent. From the general language perspective, meaning of consent means agreement, permission or approval. That means permission for something to happen or agreement to do something or give your permission for something. But however, Concern from healthcare perspective is a huge responsibility on the healthcare service provider. For example, the doctor may be charged for negligence if he fails to obtain informed concern to a particular interventional procedure. This explains the role of concern in medical practice. Now let's understand the law of concern. In a general way we can understand the concern has two important aspects one is the substantial law behind the concern or the principle behind this concern next one is what is the procedure adopted to take this informed concern both are very essential in the court of law let's understand the substantial law behind the informed concern also you can call it as the principle behind the informed concern Concerned is perhaps the only principle that runs through all aspects of healthcare provisions today from the legal perspective. It also represents the legal and ethical expression of the basic right to have one's autonomy and self-determination. Please understand this. The patient has a right to autonomy and also right to self-determination. From the bioethics perspective, autonomy is the basis for informed consent. Not only that, truth telling and confidentiality. Further, autonomy means all persons have intrinsic and unconditional worth and therefore should have the power to make rational decisions and moral choices and each should be allowed to exercise his or her capacity for self-determination that summarizes the bioethics which revolves around autonomy my dear friends not only that we need to appreciate this autonomy from the constitution of india's perspective the principle of autonomy is enshrined in the article 21 of the constitution of india which deals with right to life and personal liberty the expression personal liberty under article 21 is the widest amplitude covers a wide variety of rights including right to consent for treatment, right to refuse for treatment, right to live with the dignity, right to die with the dignity and all that goes along with it. That means it's not just a ethics my dear friend. Informed consent is a legal framework under which the healthcare provider needs to provide health services. Let's understand the procedure. The procedure for informed consent, that means the procedural law what needs to be adopted. Invariably, from the clinical perspective, we talk about two important consent. One is implied, another one is expressed consent. What do you mean by implied? The patient entering the consultation room or the consultation chamber of the doctor by his own will may be considered as an implied consent. For OPD procedures, invariably the implied consent is considered. What is expressed? Here, for a procedure which requires some time oral consent or verbal consent, written consent or else sometimes we may take Pre-printed consent form is given to the patient, he goes through it and he signs it. Further, 
because of the digital world now digital consent that is audio video consent forms are available and the patient goes through it and gives consent through a video and audio mode treating without consent under the both ethics and law is a serious violation of rights my dear friends from the civil case perspective it is a tort law or a compensation comes into picture a medical intervention without a valid informed consent is a criminal offence also and the physician can be charged with battery under criminal law based on the outcome if it is a simple injury versus grievous injury or a death the charges are framed based on that let's discuss about the ingredients of informed consent there are three important ingredients of informed consent the first one is providing unbiased information second one is whether the patient has mental capacity to give consent and the third one is voluntary consent that is without any undue pressure or coercion let's discuss each one of them the first one is providing unbiased information what does it mean here the healthcare provider or the doctor needs to give information about the diagnosis possible diagnosis or else differential diagnosis next you need to discuss about the proposed treatment or the procedure what are the side effects what are the benefits what are the alternative procedures which are available also need to be discussed further the risk and benefits of the not taking treatment taking treatment proposed procedure alternative procedure risk and benefits need to be discussed and finally the relative chances of success or failure of the proposed consent to be discussed that is the procedure need to be discussed this is the first one the second is very important is whether the person has mental capacity to give consent what are those there are four important ingredients for capacity to consent is one is comprehension second one is retaining the information third one is weighing the risk and fourth one is communicating let's understand each one of them the heart of informed consent first starts with providing unbiased information once the patient receives the information the doctor need to know whether the patient has understood the information that is comprehension once the patient is able to understand the information and is able to retain the information whether he is able to weigh the risk risk of accepting the treatment risk of refusing the treatment benefits of accepting the treatment benefits of refusing the treatment also what are the alternatives available and also how he is going to decide the decision need to be conveyed to the healthcare provider that is to the doctor how he is giving the decision whether there is any logical explanation need to be considered and the decision should be coercion free that means without any coercion the patient need to take a decision this is the substantial law or the principle behind the informed consent now the question comes is you have done all these things where is the written information that you have given this that means documentation becomes the important ingredient now so how to document this majority of the time our doctors are very busy hence they come up with pre printed consent forms here the pre printed consent form signatures are taken during hospitalization during admission and also sometimes pre printed consent with regard to diagnosis with regard to treatment rehabilitation sometimes pre printed consent form for specific procedure like pre printed consent form for mtp consent form for cesarean section consent form for any surgery can be considered consent is taken on a standard consent form is it legally applicable is it valid under the law this is the question we need to answer let's look into the blanket consent form what do you mean by bank blanket it is a consent taken on a printed form that covers almost everything a doctor or a hospital might do to a patient without mentioning any specific procedure or diagnosis 
blanket consent is legally inadequate for any procedure and does not mention about risk or alternatives it becomes invalid simply because it does not fulfills the substantial law or the principle behind the consent form let's look at one of the blanket consent form here i so and so son of aged hereby give my consent for admission to the hospital for investigation for treatment and rehabilitation purpose i have been informed about all the possible risk involved in my admission investigation and treatment if any untoward accident do occur during my hospital stay i will not hold the doctor or the treating team or the hospital for the responsible for the same i agree to pay all the cost and expenses incurred in connection with my health care look at this blanket consent form it does not talk about a specific procedure does not talk about any diagnosis does not talk about any information to be given and this is invariably signature taken during the admission procedure and during the admission the diagnosis may not be there and this is a person who is taken signature is taken by a clerk is it valid simply it becomes invalid in the court of law because this consent form does not have any information or a principle behind the consent form that is substantial law you have you would have taken the signature witness signature all that but the substantial law does not fulfill now let's look into the pre printed consent form this is one of the pre printed consent form here the patient name you can see in the top of the uh, right hand corner and also you can look at the medical record number and also you have given information about your condition the name of the clinician is given the name of the patient will be written here and here you are allowing the doctor to fill the diagnosis and you are giving a specific information such as oh the risk has been explained the benefits have been explained side effects have been explained but it's not again specific and the most likely serious information has also been given and now this again i am aware that other risk and complication not discussed may also occur and again this is almost like a blanket consent form my dear friend and this is a pre printed consent form which fits for all procedure for all diagnosis for all rehabilitation purposes for any medical speciality or surgical speciality again the substantial law is not fulfilled in this consent form also you would have taken the signature but this consent form becomes invalid in the court of law now let's discuss an important decision which was taken by national consumer form forum with regard to case on pre printed forms here this is a landmark judgment which is vinod khanna versus rj stone urology laparoscopic hospital let's discuss about this case on january 2010 mr x a 65 year old patient was suffering from severe pain abdomen and difficulty in passing urine and he goes to the fortis hospital in new delhi mr x had history of prior surgery of hernia appendix history of tuberculosis he also had acquired immune deficiency syndrome that is hiv further he had past history of cryptococcal cryptococcal meningitis kaposi sarcoma and the doctor came to know yes there is a infection which is because of the acquired immune deficiency syndrome hence the catheterization was done and urine was removed here the mr x had a financial difficulties and could not afford fortis hospital hence he took voluntary discharge from this hospital and approached rg stone urology and laparoscopic hospital there they did the invest investigation and he was operated because of multiple abscess in the pelvic area catheter was placed in the bladder for 5 days after 3 days the patient complained of passing urine in the rectum instead of his urethra please remember here the patient is hiv had multiple abscess in the pelvic and a surgery was done and during this time the complication has occurred that means the fistula has developed between communication between the bladder and the rectum the doctor advised for a natural healing and reinsertion of catheter for 6 weeks was advised 
But however, the patient got feared and approached another hospital. That is Apollo Hospital for further treatment. And for about three months, he took treatment. He did not cure, get cured. Hence, he went back to Fortis Hospital again. However, the Fortis Hospital doctor examined and clearly reported there is no urine per rectum and fistula is healed. So this is the summary of the case. Now, please remember the surgery occurred in 2010. Now, the patient gives a complaint to the State Consumer Forum in 2017. That is after 8 years, my dear friend. He gives a complaint with an allegation that he is still urinating in the rectum. And he had spent somewhere around 3.5 lakh. And he has been regularly visiting for it. Fortis Hospital was the complaint. And he demanded 1.9 crore compensation from the doctor and the hospital. The state commission condoned for delay in approaching the court. It is almost 8 years after the procedure. But however, since it was almost 1.9 crore, the state commission dismissed the case because of the lack of pecuniary jurisdiction. Since the case was dismissed at the State Consumer Forum, he approached the National Consumer Forum. Again, the National Consumer Forum accepted the case and requested the medical board. The expert opinion was taken from Maulana Azad Medical College. And again, the Maulana Azad Medical College experts reported that they did not find any deficiency in services or medical negligence in this case. National Consumer Forum also did not find any deficiency in services or medical negligence from the doctors. However, the National Consumer Commission made some serious observation from the pre-printed consent forms that was there in the medical records. The National Consumer Forum made certain observation. It reported a pre-printed and a fixed informed consent form come undertaking form with the blank spaces for limited selected handwriting entries and for the signatures has been used. The main body of the form is pre-printed and fixed. It can fit into any procedure, any doctor and any patient. After filling up the blank spaces for a limited selected handwritten entries and getting affixed signatures, we note that this is an administrative arbitrariness, arbitrariness and one-sided high-handedness and to be unfair trade practice and deceptive on the part of the hospital. As I mentioned, the hospital had taken a blanket consent form. Here, a general consent form has been used where the doctor's name can be written and the patient name can be written. Rest of them is a printed format which does not talk about any specific procedure. Hence the National Consumer Forum imposed a 10 lakh rupees fine on the hospital for using pre-printed consent form and made it very clear using a pre-printed blanket consent form as an unfair trade practice. But however, the National Consumer Commission was very clear. It clearly had said doctors were not considered negligent. Uh, however, the hospital appealed to the Supreme Court. This is the decision of the Supreme Court with regard to stay. The Supreme Court clearly said that in the meanwhile, the operation of the impinge order insofar as the direction with regard to pre-printed forms and the cost are concerned shall remain stayed. That means the Supreme Court has given a stay for the National Consumer Forum decision. This discussion is still going on in the Supreme Court whether to use a pre-printed consent form or not. At this point of time, my dear friends, since there is a stay order, you can continue to use pre-printed consent form. But however, please remember, you need to fulfill the substantial law behind the consent form. That means the principle behind the consent form need to be fulfilled. That means you need to provide information. You need to see whether the patient is able to understand the information given, whether he is able to weigh the risk, whether he is able to communicate his decision without any coercion. And that will be considered as 
an important aspect of informed consent, my dear friend. Filling the form is just a procedure. So in this decision, you need to understand. This is my observation, my dear friend. There was a delay of 8 years. That means law of limitation sets in. As per section 24A of the Consumer Protection Act 1986, which says within 2 years you have to give complaint. But here, after 8 years, the State Consumer Forum has taken. That means there has been some reason why the State Consumer Forum has taken this case. That needs to be clearly spelled out in their decision. And the doctor had operated on a HIV patient. It is a risk, but he has taken due care and precaution. Hence, the National Consumer Forum clearly said, doctor is not negligent. Not only that, the patient had multiple comorbidities. Had I mentioned earlier, tuberculosis, cryptococcal meningitis, multiple abscess, and various other conditions. In this case, the healthcare provider have completed the procedure taking signatures on the pre-printed consent form. That means they have taken the signature, but the substantial law, the principle behind the consent form is not fulfilled. That means, according to me, my dear friend, the National Consumer Forum was right. Procedure-specific consent form is the need of the hour. You cannot just say, take a signature. The question is, should we use the pre-printed consent form? Yes, of course you use, but you need to explain. You need to spend time. You need to give time to the patient to decide. So my advice, dear friends, court expects the informed consent should be administered. It is a process, process of providing information, providing alternative treatment, information, risk involved, benefit involved, what are the outcomes need to be discussed? What are the questions asked by the patient? Time taken for decision? How many people from the patient's family was involved in decision making? All those information need to be documented. Will it be possible in a pre-printed consent form is a big question we need to ask ourselves as a doctors. Court would expect the appropriate documentation, not just the pre-printed consent form. So, please understand this my dear friends. The consent form is a process. It's not a, just a signature on a piece of paper. The consent obtained should be legally valid. The person who gives consent should be adult and he, had, he should have a good mental capacity to take decision and it should be of free will. A doctor who treats need to take consent form. Consent is a process, not just a signature on a piece of paper, my dear friend. Please remember that. And it is the responsibility of the doctor or the person who is in charge of the patient will be responsible for taking the consent. But the doctor can delegate this responsibility to his junior doctors, to a nurse or any third party. But the final responsibility lies on the doctor, my dear friend. The law presumes the doctor to be in a dominating position. Hence the consent should be obtained after providing all information to the patient, my dear friend, and you need to give time to the patient before he decides. Thank you very much for your valuable time. Stay safe.